All right, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, my voice cracked a little bit there. I have to sip on my uh, flat white. Mm. That you made yourself. Yeah. You know how glad I am to have a uh, professional style coffee maker when I go into a coffee shop and they want $4.90 for a freaking uh, a cappuccino or a flat white. or What's the other one? What did we say the other one was? There's the espresso latte. 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 Yeah. It's like, well, I can make that crap at home for not $4. That's for sure. Not $4, not $5. Yeah. So, but uh, we're not going to talk about coffee right now. We're going to talk about tactical response interview part two. If you, uh, if you missed somehow uh, the part one, you should, you should definitely go back and listen to it. And uh, Tennessee on guns. I thought this was a fantastic uh, tie in because tactical response is in headquartered in Tennessee. And we have the Tennessee uh, on guns. You know, what do they think about gun control and guns and so on and so forth? We got a homeroom for you. We got a Brownells bullet points for you. And we've got a, uh, a dirt coat finished firearm segment. We're going to talk about colors, all of that on today's episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping owner, Zach Martin. Now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pin Hand of America, Professor Paul Martin. Yes, indeed. So here we are. It is time for another student of the gun radio, and I'm honored to be behind this black carbon steel microphone. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So uh, if you got questions, we've got answers. How can you ask questions? You might ask, well, if you are watching this live on the Discord, if you're following us on studentofthegun.com slash Discord, uh, if you just put it studentofthegun.com slash Discord, then, well, you will be able to join us. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, by the way, Jared, that, that information that we were talking about off air is... It's available via Google search. So okay. <laughs> it's like you just have to type in like the thing, the, yeah. the question in the Google and and you'll get it. <laughs> so, okay. but yeah, um, yeah, this, this is 2023. This is, it's too bad. You can't hide anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, we, I guess we could type in um, who is Nicholas or we could do that. Who is Nicholas or. That's right. Um, yeah, he's an American football player who is currently a free agent. Or uh, he is the nom de plume for a civilized barbarian, a savage gentleman with 30-plus years of operational experience. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. He's available on audiobooks, bestsellers, and Kindles. Yes. <laughs> All right, but enough about Nicholas Orr. So if you guys want to uh, ask a question, jump into the Discord live. You can always follow us when we record these live on Discord, and you can see us. You see us doing what we're doing. Uh, but in the meantime, Jared is going to – we always do – we do a review of the week. And this week is no different, so I'm going to let Jared take it away. All right, this one I'm going to pay homage, 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 home – age to some of the old school listeners and viewers of uh i think this was mostly done in the homeroom segment when we recorded back in our biloxi studio the a-hole filter the a-hole filter yeah we yeah you one, guys, guys remember the a-hole filter yeah, we used to so catch I, them all the time oh man it was like a big net yep hat we tip to the, the people who understand what this is and if you don't go back and look at some of our homeroom videos you can find on our Juxy channel, studentofthegun.com slash Juxy, or our YouTube channel, studentofthegun.com slash YouTube. Now, this says, one star for promoting high point garbage. Nobody wants a junk weapon. That's from mm -hmm. uh, Lapsian Double D from iTunes. 
And well, yeah. most of you guys that have been around for a while know what we have to say to that. But I wanted to take this moment to talk about people that take time to rate something one star because of gear that they disagree with. Right. It, it's a, I don't, I, I would venture to say that this person has never had any experience with an actual high point firearm because no. every single one that no. we've shot, you just run them into the dirt and they work amazing. They just, mm. they just work. So, and then another thing that I want to talk about here is the, the fact of, um, what would you call this? What, there's a word for this dad that you used to use and I can't remember what, what it was, but it was like picking, picking at other people for something that you don't like. Um, and there's a specific word. Some of the old guys, the old school listeners help me out here. Um, cause I can't remember what it was, but there's, I a, say lots of things. I know yeah, oh. yeah, Doug's he commented and said the high point banner. Yep. That's exactly what it the was. High point, oh yeah. There's the a-hole filter. Oh yeah. yeah. We used to catch people in the a-hole filter all the time. And what was great is we'd have all, we, you know, we'd be live. So there'd be the, all the, all the normal people there. And then some RIA would jump in and they're like, does that banner say high point? Blah, 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 blah. And, and the, and, and I wouldn't say anything. I would just close my mouth and all of, and it was like, it was like throwing a pork chop into a pool of piranhas. <laughs> it was pretty good. Everyone's like, Pah! and they're like, we caught one. We got one. Ha! You got caught. Oh man. It worked. The, the a-hole filters working. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And they're like, what are you talking about? What's an a-hole filter? I'm like you're in it. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> that's pretty funny. You're so, in it. So the the yeah. point of this is to let everybody know it's like, hey, if if you can't get past something that you disagree with, that's kind of the purpose of the show is to challenge your thinking, challenge your thought process, and deliver information to you that you might not hear elsewhere. And if you cannot, if there's something that you disagree with and you cannot get past that, that's a sign of low emotional t- intelligence. And there are things that you can. The good news is. There are things that you can do to work on that and and raise your emotional quotient that's similar to the intelligence quotient. Um, so that's the good news. Uh, and if you guys want to hear some tips on how to do that, then I can get those for you. But I won't spend any more time talking about that yeah. right now. No, it's it's it is it's more like it's uh it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than co- to convince an RIA to stop being that way oh uh, yeah because and, they, they the the fact is they're they are that way because they're emotionally stunted uh and they're and they're emotionally immature they're mentally immature and they're emotionally stunted um yeah and, and from it, my and, point of view it's like you you took the time to give us a star so that's a positive in my book like, yeah if somebody you disregard was, the net promoter score methodology yeah. And you just look at the, it's like you could have spent zero effort of your time and put no stars and you, <laughs> you're an idiot. Oh yeah. You get no stars yeah. and everybody yeah. in the room is dumber yeah. for having listened to what you've said. Everything not at no point in time did you <laughs> come anywhere near a rational thought, anything that could be considered a rational thought. Oh, my that's, God. that is the great, that is I the reason that. you should watch Billy Madison. Yeah. If for no other reason than the end, the very end is is that speech, which is Adam Sandler didn't even do uh, that speech. I'm sure that he, he probably wrote it or, or Jack Girapiero, or who's his, his co-writer, uh, probably wrote that. But uh, yeah, you know, I was yeah. listening to um, it, with the one star thing. It's funny that you said that because I was listening to Rogan interviewing Andrew Dice Clay. Um, and I appreciated it because I was alive and paying attention when he was a breakout star, I remember listening to his routine. I remember someone saying, you got to listen to this and pulling out a cassette tape and putting it in and making me listen to it. Cause this was way before the internet. Oh man. He was way before the internet. It was like 88, uh, 88, 89, right? 90 time frame. And like, listen to this. You got to listen to this. And I listened to it and I just, I laughed. We had to keep it rewinding because I was laughing so hard that I was missing the follow-up jokes. Uh, so anyway, he was talking with, I think it was Clay about that, about how people get in and leave one-star ratings. He's like, 
why would you even bother to waste? He said, he goes, I would never go somewhere and leave a one star rating. He said, because if I, I, I hated him that much, I wouldn't even give him my time. Yeah. He said, but he said, the, he said the, the mentality and, and it's a loser mentality. It is a complete and total loser mentality. Now and there are ways that you can do a successful low star review. And that would be by writing the way that the person can improve the product, right? So in today's day and world, or room for improvement. World, what room for improvement? Yes, exactly. In, in today's world, most consumers they'll go look at reviews before they buy a physical product. At least I don't know how it is for you guys on uh, on digital media, especially if it doesn't cost anything. Like this is a this is a no cost to you show. It costs us a lot of time effort and money to produce this thing. And it, it's taken us a long time to gain the knowledge that we have that we talk about here, but it's no cost to you. And we hope that a portion of you, and we know that a portion of you will become grad program members because you're kind of a step above the, you're a cut above everybody else. So that's, you can do that at get SOTG.com by the way. But that's, that's the hope that we have is that people that we deliver this free show to, will um will eventually become grad program members and you know people kind of weed themselves out but what i'm trying to say here is there's a good way that you can do a low star rating if you really don't like the product that you're having and you want to inform other people then instead of writing one sentence that nobody it doesn't really help anybody if you really want to spend your time helping the consumer and the show or the product producer then do that and write a detailed reason why you don't like the show, why you don't like the product and how it can be improved. And then that's actually helpful to people. No, uh, I, what I've noticed is that most one star or two star reviews don't actually do that. There are some on, uh, on like Amazon that are very in depth and detailed, which is super helpful uh, to the people that do read the reviews. And that's one that I would actually spend my time reading and trying to digest the information. Um, but mostly we listen to the people that are willing to spend, put their ducats where their mouth is, because that's, those are the people mm -hmm. that are supporting us. And so we, oh, want, yeah. we want to support them. <laughs> and then if we run out of it, feedback it, from them, which we never do, um, there's so much good feedback there. It's like, Hey guys, keep doing this. And then that's what we're going to do. But if we ever do run out of that feedback, then maybe I'll look at the, in the trash can over there in file 13. Yeah. So you want to hear, want to hear something cool? Uh, uh, I, I got a, I just got an ad for, I'd be, I'd be plucking on a guitar, right? Yeah. I'd be plucking on a guitar and I just got an ad for a titanium guitar pick that has a wrist strap. So if you lose it, it won't fall on the ground, uh, which is great. Um, uh, because <laughs> I, of course, people are like, how, how, how cheap is a guitar pick? Just get another one. Yeah, but when it's a really nice one mm -hmm. and you drop it. So see my fingers here? Yeah. So I was, I was on the, the patio of Lollipops in Saratoga giving a free guitar concert, right? Oh, yeah. To the masses. And I dropped my pick and it fell. And of course, it's a patio. It's a wooden patio. So there's space between the boards. It dropped and it fell and it landed perfectly right on the crack, right? So I reached down to try and pick it up, and the moment I touched it, it went boop oh. and, and slid down, and it was a black student of the gun icon guitar pick. I'm like, oh. And it's one, of those de it's one of those deals where it's a raised patio, but there's like 18 inches, and there's no way I was going to crawl on my belly no, nah, I wasn't going to do that. But for, fortunately, I went into my guitar case and I had other picks. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh. and so I just, what's funny is I just got a pop-up ad for a guitar pick leash. <laughs> That's pretty you funny. put it around your wrist and it, you can let it go and it won't fall it won't drop onto the patio fall between the crack and be gone forever <laughs> i wonder if how did they know to send me that ad how did that ad know to pop up it's crazy
You, you know who is like a super spy? Instagram is the, is a super spy bot. If you don't believe this, so I went to my, my I use my uh, search engine on my phone, and it's not, it's not Chrome. It's uh, the other one, Safari or something like that. And uh, I searched chicken coop, right? Now, my Instagram is filled with chicken product ads now overnight so i went into my yeah so if you don't think you're being spied upon by your phone you're just super naive uh, and if you don't believe me uh about that just type in something go to your google search or your whatever search go any it doesn't matter anymore go to any uh, any you go into your search engine on your phone and type in something you would never type in like that that you would like you know equestrian gear or something like if you've never owned a horse in your life go ahead and type in you know equestrian or something just do it once and then wait and see how many horse attack ads show up in your instagram feed it's it's crazy but anyway um so the moral of the story is don't be an ria all right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a Duracoat Finish Firearm. We're going to talk about colors, colors, colors. You know, we, could, we should actually get that. So, you know, there was a movie called Colors from 1988. It was about gangs. In, in LA, it was about LA gangs, and uh, Ice T did a song for the movie called Colors, 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 and old guys like me know you, you young kids still know anything about that. But uh, so Zach, I need you to send a letter off to Ice T. Got it. And uh, see if we can if we can get express written permission to use the the song Colors for the Duracoat feature every week. Let me know how that goes. On it. <laughs> He's going to come back. He's like, yeah, his management company says it's fine. <laughs> oh, no, recently, I, uh, in, how many of you guys remember the great zombie apocalypse um, or the great, uh, what do we, it wasn't the apocalypse, but it was the zombie Survival. hunter time in america yeah i remember that uh, was like in yeah. the early 2010s the yeah in the 20 or so when every come it was almost overnight i can't i don't know who the first one was but they all adopted the radioactive green color as the zombie color right and manu firearms manufacturers knife manufacturers like almost overnight we had zombie hunter everything. Hornady put the little, that green, they changed the color of the polymer that they're putting in their tap ammo or their critical defense ammo to green. That's so Labeled cool. it zombie hunter. Brownells did a whole series of videos. You remember the Brownells video series where yeah. they put the, they sent the guys out, they, they recorded a bunch of things and they were out and there were zombie hunters and, and uh, I'm sure Sure, bro, bro, Josh was part of that, uh, where they all dressed up like it was Walking Dead, you know, like they yeah. were in The Walking Dead. And oh, yeah. I, yeah, that's right. Remember that? Yeah, and, and then uh, they had, like, the, the gear promotion stuff. It's like, yep. each person. yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah. They had a whole a cool line of zombie hunting everything. And you ha it had to be that green, that radioactive green color, mm -hmm. right? Uh, who else? Who else? Like, oh, our buddy Steve Johnson was working with, uh, was it K Bar or Ontario? K Bar. It was K Bar. K Bar. And they put the zombie green handles on all these things. There were zombie hunters, blah, 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 blah. And if, it, I, it, if I know our industry, I would say that it was a fair time after Zombie Land came about, the movie. Mm -hmm. and and made the zombie stuff popular i would say probably like a, a year or two years after that movie yeah our industry started producing that stuff 
But it went on for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I think that the Zombieland movie was probably the impetus because that made that topic popular. Popular. It was was hip. It was cool. Yeah. And then, of course, they did Zombieland the movie, and then they did the Fear the Walking Dead TV show about the same time they started. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the Walking Dead. When yeah, was that? Yeah, so they, they, those things happened about the, it, like about 10 Zombieland years ago. Zombieland was 2009. Okay, yeah, so that matches right, 15 up. years ago. So about 15 years ago, all of a sudden, everything was zombie everything, right? And then and it 2010 was... 2010 was The Walking Dead, yeah. Yep. And wow. then the balloon burst. That all of a sudden the balloon popped and all of that stuff that was zombie everything was became was went into the discount bin. Went into the discontinued discount bin. Well, this weekend I encountered uh I, I went to a uh uh kind of a going out of business sale and they had bins filled with survival knives, right? Mm. These survival knives. And all of the and there was there were different kinds of them. There was fixed blades. There was little like little folders. There was was that there was in little, Wyoming little, or was in, that in, yeah, it was in, in what well, was in Vernal. And there was a little and there were like folder knives. There was like the little survival fire starters. And my point is this though, all of the handles were that color. They were all that zombie green color, right? And at first. My first reaction was, ah, I know where these came from. These are left over from 10 years ago when everybody was doing zombie everything. Now, that they, they, they didn't say zombie on them, but it was that color, right? It was that radioactive green color, that green ooze color. And I was talking to somebody about it, and I said, you know, actually, that's not a bad thing. It's actually not a bad thing because these knives these like survival things they were sold as like outdoor emergency survival you know like the like one thing had a little it had the little mini compass and it had the little fire starting rod and it had the little mini like a folding knife and stuff and i said oh, that's actually not stupid and the reason it's not stupid is because if it is a survival item and it is a you know, oh crap, I have I, I got lost in the woods, right? But I have this this little kit. The great thing about that, and I mean it's not blaze orange, but how often are you going to encounter the radioactive zombie green color in the woods? Right? If you drop that into the dirt, into like you're in a pine forest, you know, you're in a coniferous forest and you drop you accidentally drop it you're probably going to be able to find that radioactive zombie green color pretty quickly or readily you know uh and if it's in a pack or if it's in a pouch or whatever and you're opening up a pack or opening up a pouch it's not black you know how how many of you guys have outdoor packs or pouches in there and they have black liners and you open them up and unless you're in direct sunlight you can't see anything inside it's like a black hole right? You can't say anything in it. Then you got to get your flashlight out to shine in your pack to find the stuff that's in there. So the idea of using the, that color, you know, that zombie green color or the radioactive green or whatever you want to call it. And I think they just were calling it zombie green back then. Uh, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's actually not a bad idea, you know? Uh, and for those who just can't bring themselves to carry a blaze orange knife, <laughs> some people are like, just, dude, I get it, but I just can't make myself buy or carry a, a, a blaze orange knife. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. Uh, so, yeah, when it comes to colors, that uh, when it comes to emergency gear or something like that, survival gear, not a bad idea. It's probably a pretty smart idea. There you go. All right, mid-roll sponsors. We already talked about our buddies at High Point, uh, the RIA filter, and <laughs> how maybe before you go on the internet, uh, but people use pseudonyms so that they they hide behind their their little screen names. 
So people don't actually know who they are. I don't hide behind a screen name. I'm me. And when I say something in public, I say it in public. But, uh, uh, was, is the competition kills thing from Juicy? Was that last week or the week before? I put that in there today. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. So if, if you want to uh, talk about uh, how competition kills uh, or understand, if you or actually if you want to see some really cool graphics, uh, Zach did a fantastic job creating a, uh, well, uh, graphics or animation, I guess. He created animation to go. I was, I related a story. I related, it wasn't, a, it was a historical event, but it took place in 1980. And so there wasn't any footage or film or anything about that. But uh, Zach created some animation to go along with the story. And he did a fantastic yeah. job. And if you haven't, availed yourself to that yet it's called competition killed kills uh and how to properly use cover and what can happen if you don't use cover properly people are like well what's the big deal you know i'll just i'll just you know blah 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 it's like here's the deal dude um if, if you use cover improperly or incorrectly in the real world uh you can pay for that mistake with your life which we have seen. So uh, you might want to avail yourself to that information. So check out Jukesy.com, the student of the gun channel, student of the gun.com slash Jukesy competition kills. How to use cover properly. All right. New listeners, perk up your ears, pay attention. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called seven training tips that could save your life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeed. That's what you can. That's what you should do. You should and you can do that. Yes, indeed. Studentofthegood.com. All right. Uh, Brownells Bullet Points brought to you, as always, by our good buddies at Brownells. All right, bing, bang, boom. Uh, speaking of Brownells, you guys, uh, I was wearing my brand new super cool shall not be infringed T-shirt that I got when I visited uh, my buddy Roy uh, this last April. Uh, we were in Montezuma. No, we, well, we were, weren't in Montezuma. Montezuma is where the old one is. We were in Grinnell. <laughs> it's going a little bit old school there. I've been to the Montezuma facility when it was the actual Brownells facility. Now it's in Grinnell. But... Uh, I digress. If you go to the Brownells website right now, it says, oh, we got a special Father's Day event with free shipping. Da, 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 da. How many of you guys out there, you're, Jared, you know your mom is the free shipping freak, right? Yeah. She's, she's like, she says, I was going to buy that, and then I found out that shipping was $5. I'm like, I'm not paying you for shipping. That's funny. <laughs> we, she's got, we've gotten so spoiled. Yeah, You've gotten so spoiled. But uh, I just want to throw the, this out there as the shipping guy. People who are listening, yeah, shipping's expensive. <laughs> shipping yeah. is expensive. <laughs> we, it is. And well, you know who did it is Amazon. Amazon screwed shippers. They screwed the whole entire rest of the uh, uh, what do we want to call ourselves? The online uh, marketing. Or yeah, the e-commerce. The e That's it. E they screwed everyone who does e-commerce because they do so much business that they can just absorb the cost, right? Kind of like Walmart. Yeah, but if you're a small company and you ship 10, 15 packages a week, you can't just absorb all the shipping costs because if you start absorbing all the shipping costs you end up not making any money and believe it or not uh you can't run a business on zero profit right <laughs> you can't run a business not making money i know you're like what uh, you know, the funny thing is 
about the Amazon free shipping. Yeah. I would venture to say that most people don't order enough packages from Amazon to make the yearly membership like worth balance it. out the yeah. shipping, the free shipping. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of cray cray when that, when it comes to that. Uh, but it, when you do, when they do run a, uh, a special like they're, like they're doing right now, uh, when they do run a special, what you need to do is, is you need to go ahead and take advantage of it. So one of the things that they're doing right now for father's day is they have special, uh, items marked off, uh, with free shipping and maybe your dad deserves a new aim point. Maybe he, he wants or deserves a new aim point. You might want to think about that. I hope my daughters are listening right now. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Or, or a, uh, an EOTech 512 holographic weapon site or an EXP S2 holographic weapon site. So there you go. Or an ATN thermal monocular. Yes, indeed. So all these things are on sale right now from our buddies at brownells.com for a special Father's Day event with free shipping. So there you go. We figured it would be a good thing to let you guys know about that. So we you just know did. What I, you know what I want for Father's Day, those of you that are listening and also care? <laughs> and also care. Uh, and you don't have to buy it for me. I just want to know the information. Um, my wife will buy it for me. I'm looking for a laser engraver. There are so many freaking options on the market right now. I don't know what I, I've never, the only one that I've ever used is like a super professional one that I don't need that big of a laser engraver. I just need something that I can do a few pieces a week on. And uh, so I'm interested to know any, if anybody has any feedback on what they've used and how good it is and, and kind of the, the nuances that aren't mentioned in the product descriptions or the reviews that would be awesome and super helpful oh i don't know how expensive his is but if you, you talk to joe mo no he's they've got a laser engraver and i remember he was doing videos he's like we just got a new laser engraver when we're laser I'll engraving to, to everything, everything we can get our hands on all right so there you go yeah when people get those they they like engrave everything they can get their hands on it's kind of like when when paul first discovered Duracoat Canon can technology and like Duracoated everything I could get my hands on <laughs> everything that wasn't nailed down. <laughs> All right. Hey, you know what it's time for? It's time for me to be quiet and you guys to listen to Zach for just a second. Okay. Shop SOTG.com is the perfect place to go. If you are a student of the gun, whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the Pimp Hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed you do. And as Dad mentioned previously, Father's Day is on its way. And that is why over at ShopSOTG.com, you can get the uh, Dad Rules book or and or the coffee mug on sale right now at shopsotg.com. Does your dad rule? Does he have rules? Any of these combination of words, then you should get himself one of those books. Shop there you go. You should. And if you've been waiting, well, if you've been waiting, the wait is over because they're discounted. You, they're on sale. So stop waiting and order your dad the Dad Rules books book or you can order him a dad rules coffee mug and then he can have it all year long and every time he picks up that coffee cup and drinks out of it he can think of what a great kid you are there yeah. you go if you, you want to think of how fortunate he is to have a wonderful child like you yeah. or uh, heck you could you could give your dad this as well the pft training camp jared went out of focus again and uh dad you want to talk right. about the pft training camp for a minute yep what about it the PFT training camp, it is is where like-minded individuals get together and uh, we're going to work as a team. We're going to figure out how to work as a team. We're going to do land navigation, communication, signaling, daytime signaling, nighttime signaling. We're going to be doing some shooting. We're going to be doing shooting as a team. We're going to be working as teams. Uh, it's going to be a good time and we're and it's a training camp. So we're actually going to be doing outdoor survival as well. 
So if you've got, if you have that backpack full of super cool survival stuff, but you've actually, you've never actually taken it out, done anything out in the woods or the field with it, now is a good time to do that. You might want to do that before it's an emergency, not after. So there you go. And uh, go ahead, Zach. I say, and talking about before, when is the class? It's the uh, the very end of June, beginning of July. It's the uh, you will show up on Friday, the thirtieth of June, and then we will train uh, that night, and then of course on the first of July and the second of July, and you'll be dismissed to go home the afternoon of the 2nd of July, so you'll have plenty of time to get back home and grill your hot dogs and hamburgers and light your fireworks and stuff for the 4th of July. Yes, indeed. So get over to shopstg.com. Waste no time. Get over there and sign up today right now. That's right. That's right. You want to do it. You want to do it. Oh, oh, and oh, 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 oh. What, what, what special thing is happening? So if you sign All up right. for it, we're doing this in conjunction with Ready Man. Yes, indeed. So everybody gets what? Everybody will be leaving this class with a, a pair of the, what are they called? The, the Wilderness Survival Dog Tags, courtesy the of Dog Ready Tag Man. Survival Cards from Ready Man. Yes, indeed. And you will be leaving there with a pair of those. And, and in addition to that. Go ahead. Uh, our good friends at Hardhead Veterans. All right. Yes, Hardhead Veterans have donated. They're going to donate a an HHV ATE that's above the ear uh, bump guard. And if you don't know what that is, it is a helmet to protect your noggin, right? And so the class honor graduate, the honor graduate uh, from the class will... Well, they will be able to get. Okay, they'll be they'll be granted or winning or whatever you want to call it a uh, a HHV bump guard, and uh, that's uh, let me see da, 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 tactical helmet. Yeah, bump guard. So that's a two hundred and twenty nine dollar value right there. It's a two hundred and twenty nine dollar value. It's actually a two hundred ninety nine dollar value, but they have they're running a sale right now. They're running a special sale. But uh, either way, uh, that was pretty cool of them, the guys at Hardhead Veterans, to uh, to volunteer to donate that. So uh, whoever is chosen as the class honor grad for the PFT training camp will get a certificate, gift certificate, basically, and they'll be able to go online and and uh, order get theirs. Help. I yeah. get a size for your noggin there. Yeah, I get the right size for your noggin. So there you go. All right, we got a student of the gun homeroom. Brought to you by student of the gun university or SOTGU.com. We're gonna talk about being dangerous on demand. All right, this is this story is effed up like a freaking soup sandwich. This story is is like a screen door on a submarine. It is so fornicated. It's so effed up. And it's it's terrible that this happened. But we've got to learn. Don't we? I mean, are we as as humans? All right, here's the deal. I know that not all humans are going to get it. I know that some humans are preconditioned to just be manipulated mentally, uh, and we can't help them. But I'd like to think that the reason I'm doing this show is to help other people, to reach those who can be reached and save those who can be saved. Uh, somebody actually reached out to me, uh, I hadn't heard from them in a while, and they sent me a quick message, and they're like, hey, how, how's things going? How are, how's everything going with you guys? And I said, and my response was, well, every day we get up and we attempt to save those who can be saved. Uh, and this, that, well, this doesn't involve a hippo or a mountain lion or a bear. It involves an animal that you see at the zoo every day that you believe is probably one of the more gentle creatures. Look how gentle and majestic they are. Mm. 
Jared, you got it open? From the sun.com.co.uk. May 21st, 2023. Says mum's pain. My baby girl was killed in a draft attack that left me paralyzed as I shielded kids from my beast or from the beast. It still haunts me. You said what now? A what attack? A lion? Water yeah, that's, buffalo? This is something you don't hear. Very a what? Often. I, I think a this giraffe. Is the first time I've ever heard that a giraffe attacked somebody. Nicole Panos, 25, was left paralyzed from the waist down while trying to save toddler Kaya and her four-year-old son, Caden, from the animal after it charged at them in the Bellini Game Park where they lived in South Africa in October. Pictures, pictures, yeah. pictures, 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 Cute pictures. Baby. Her son suffered skull yeah. fractures but managed to escape with his life after curling up in a ball in the sand to escape the giraffe who the family believed was protecting a calf. Well, a yeah, mothers, mothers will go hard. They'll be savage if they're trying to protect their children. That's for sure. So why? Then the question is, why are these people between um, mother giraffe and her calf? Why are they there? That Did I tell you about the time that we went hiking? It was just when we had Ruth and we were hiking and there was a mother moose on one side of the path and a baby moose on the other side of the path. And uh, so Alex, myself, and Ruth, we got through that quickly when we realized what was going on. And there's other people that were just, they pulled out their phones and they stood there between on the path. Between the, the mother, mother and the calf? Yeah, and, and then filming the calf. And luckily the moose didn't attack anybody. That's but amazing. I was standing up there. I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, like that's a baby and that's a mother. You should probably that get is out of the way. Perfect recipe to be stomped into the ground. Yeah. So, and so to continue the story, tragically, one-year-old Kaya, whom Nicole was holding in her arms, died after suffering a traumatic head injury. And that would suck. Seven months on from the attack, the heartbroken mom paid tribute to her daughter and told the son that the terrifying events that unfolded still haunt her every day. Well, duh. I mean, you're your no kidding. Died. Thanks for uh, really fighting back tears. Nicole said, my world completely shattered the day Kaya died. Uh, on one level, I feel betrayed by our safe space and confused. What? Yep. Behave in a threatening manner to the draft. All right. So, but as this a mother, is I, the, this, remember what I said this story is like a soup sandwich. Yeah. It is effed up like a soup sandwich. It's like a freaking screen door on a submarine, right? It's like a football bat. I saw that and I was like, dear Lord in heaven, did this huge adult, this is 25 year old. What is a 25 year old, Zach? Is it Gen Z? Uh, it's whatever I am. Yeah. I feel betrayed by our safe space. We didn't behave in a threatening manner to the giraffe. Somebody done failed this kid. So this is an adult. This, this is not a 12 year old. Well, I mean, as a this kid, is a person who's 20. This, this person. I know. This is a person who's 25 years old, and their statement is, we feel betrayed by our safe space. We didn't behave in a threatening manner. So you didn't behave in a threatening manner to the wild animal, and you can't imagine why the wild and Of course, all of this is supposition. Uh. You know, he says, he says, they didn't see a baby. My thought was, where is her baby? Uh, and I don't know. They, they think that, she, that the, the giraffe was defending a calf, but they don't know. But the deal is. Oh, I see. This is a they're, family. But they're wild. These are wild animals. It's not a Walt Disney movie, Okay. They don't get up on their hind legs and dance, and, and they don't talk to you, right? These are wild animals, and you have to respect them as wild animals. You've never and had a they giraffe will talk to you? kill you. Hmm. You ever seen giraffes fight? I've they seen giraffes fight. A giraffe uses its head as a battering ram. They actually have horns, and what they'll do is they'll, wail, they'll take that big muscular neck 
and wind up and come down whammo man with their with their heads and a giraffe's skull has to be 50 pounds their head has to be 50 pounds um uh, so ladies and gentlemen when are we going to get through and this is south africa so it's not just america it's not just merry old england young people have been brainwashed their brains have been broken they don't understand the basic survival instinct you know the 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 folks that live out in the in the kalahari and in the in on the in the serengeti those dudes that live in those mud huts and stuff and then crap in holes every day and have to go walk three miles to get water from a, a stream or whatever they would hear or see this and be like yeah you white people are the stupidest mother lovers in the world like what those are wild animals you don't pet them you, you they're not gonna lay down and let you name them give it's like they're wild they're gonna <sighs> We, I couldn't, we couldn't believe this was happening. What do you mean you couldn't believe it was happening? These, these aren't domestic pets, all right? They're wild animals. We felt betrayed by our safe space. I don't even know what that means. I'm trying to... I don't even know what that I'm means. I'm trying to comprehend it. And it probably comes from... Here it says, Nicole and her husband, Jason, lived with their children on site at the family business, a luxury game park popular with families who travel from across the world to stay in the lodges on site. Yep. So you know, they, if, it's if you want one of those things, this is yeah. actually a really good lesson to learn uh, or be reminded of for anything in life. The more comfortable you get, the more dangerous it becomes. It's like just, just with firearms as well. When you get to, a more comfortable level and you and you stop focusing on the fundamentals that's when it could potentially become more dangerous yeah so i mean i'm not i'm not against these game parks where they have the you know you know you've seen them they have like a a, a hut or a little house cabin that you can you can rent and you go there and you can go out in the morning and drink your coffee on the porch and you can look out and see the giraffes and the zebras and stuff wandering around i'm not opposed to that but here's the deal you, you got to keep some distance between you and them those are wild animals it's like you said with these people taking videos of a moose and her calf yeah i'm like, like guys get out right, from in between them all right any moose at all whether it's a, a bull or a cow generally ill-tempered they're not friendly animals they don't want to be your friend they, they don't want, they're not going to eat corn out of your hand. Uh, uh, I don't know which one's more dangerous, quite frankly, because the males are really super territorial, but the females are also crazy protective. And a fem a cow moose, you're like, oh, it's just a female moose. It's not, it's like a cow moose could go like 1,800 pounds. What does that mean? Have you ever, you ever tried stand, to stop you ever, uh, you've, two girls from fighting and like humans? A female That's worse a, than stepping in between two men. A cow moose will freaking stomp you into it'll just keep stomping you until you don't move anymore. Like they don't care. They don't want to be your friend. They don't want to eat corn out of your hand and they don't want to pose for selfies. Uh and you know when these people up in Yellowstone they get run over they get stomped to death by freaking buffalo and you know, or they get gored by the freaking elk because they are trying to take selfies with the elk and the elk. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Man, I don't pick up. The, don't know you know, how this... my my recommendation is if you see a bear cub, go ahead and pick it up and pet it, or a bobcat. Cub. Yeah, if you see a bobcat, just pick it up and pet it. And uh... <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, you got to be dangerous on demand, and the first step is mindset mindset is the first step in being dangerous on demand yes indeed and if you would like to know more go to sotgu.com all right uh let's talk about tennessee real quick and then we'll get into our part two of the uh interview of the tax response interview uh, do Dude. poll most tennesseans want authorities focusing on dangerous people 
not guns, as governor pushes order of protection law. This is from dailywire.com. Uh, most Tennesseans want authorities to focus on dangerous or arresting dangerous people rather than confiscating weapons from those deemed mentally ill. According to a new poll that comes as Republican Governor Bill Lee pushes for a violation, a variation of a, a variation law yeah. following the Covenant school shooting. Yeah, we got to do something. You got to do something. Two thirds of those surveyed want current laws to be enforced to remove dangerous people from the public rather than passing new ones that would leave them in the neighborhood. According no to kidding. a coefficient poll shared exclusively with the daily wire, Lee has called for a special session in August, pass the gun legislation, sparking debate within the Tennessee, Tennessee GOP, which is largely made up of staunch pro second amendment conservatives. Lee's office attempted to assuage conservative fears telling the Daily Wire that governor's proposal is different from red flag laws passed by other states. The, All I, right. would, I, I would debate that anything that needs a special session to ram through probably should be slowed down. Probably is, is dangerous. It needs a little bit more time to be dis- debated and thought about. Let's... Are we never as a nation is is no one ever going to point out that all red flag laws are direct violation of the Constitution of the United States of America? I don't well, yeah, care but, if you think it's a good idea. I don't yeah, think but, if you think it's a nice idea. Press Secretary Jade Byers says, to be clear, the governor does not support red flag laws. His proposal is different from any laws across the country. It would strengthen Tennessee's existing law around the order of protection process for cases of domestic violence and enhance support for law enforcement, ensure due process, require the highest burden of proof, and boost mental health support. Mm -hmm. So what she just said there is there's nothing been done like this to have data to show that Uh this thing would work. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, extreme risk protection laws are called red flag laws, uh, include Republican led Indiana and Florida. All right. They're all illegal and they're all lie. They're all based on lies because it's, they're not dealing with the people. They're trying, then objects like the suicide thing. Oh, red flag laws to prevent suicide. Red flag laws to prevent suicide. Say, so if, if, if you believe your, 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 uh, uncle or your cousin or your neighbor, call this 800 number and, uh, and, and file a complaint and we'll send the police to their house to confiscate their property and they'll take all their guns away from them. And if they want them back, they're going to have to come to the they will have to come on their knees to their master with an attorney and beg for their property back well how do you what how does that prevent suicide well we took their guns away now they can't kill themselves so why why would they what so you're telling me someone who's truly genuinely suicidal they, they're going to kill themselves or they plan to kill themselves or threaten to kill themselves. But you took away their guns and made sure there's no guns in that house. So now they can't kill themselves. This is when anyone with a brain would say, so did suicide on planet Earth begin with the invention of gunpowder? Well, no, I mean, uh, no, but, but that's a good step. It's a, it's a good, it's a good, we're doing something. What are you doing for that person? You claim to care about that person. We care about people and we just don't want people to kill themselves because it's just bad. All right. So what, what did you do to help them? We took away their property. We demoralized them. What we did was we demoralized them. We made them stand in a corner at gunpoint while we rifled through their house, took their property and told them, gave them a receipt, or maybe we just told them to go F themselves and left. That'll make them not kill themselves. That'll, what? You just, you just shat on them. You just treated them like a criminal. You just showed them 
that you have the authority over them, that they're a peasant, that you're their master, and you took their property. Are you going to take away gravity? Are you going to take away sharp? You know, hell, if it was England, Jared, they would take all the sharp objects out of the house, too. We took away all the pointy knives. Did you, did you, did you take away all the prescription medicine? It's like, what, it, what, what are you, are you kidding me? It's a lie. It's all lies. And here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand when you put, all right, there's already laws in place. You can't beat your wife. It's against the law. Okay. You can't murder people. It's against the law. You can't threaten to murder people. It's against the law. All of these things are already against the law. We don't need more laws. So you're telling me someone who's willing to commit murder. But if you pass a red flag law, they, they won't be able to commit murder anymore. Yeah, they won't be able to commit murder anymore. They won't be able to commit suicide anymore because we passed a special law. It's like, well, do you take them into custody and charge them with attempted murder, you know, reckless, negligent, whatever? No. We're, this is all control. It's all gun control. It has nothing to do with helping people or it, it's crap. It's crap. And the people of Tennessee, apparently, based on this poll, are seeing through this crap. And they know that this backdoor gun control doesn't keep anyone safe. How about enforcing the anti-murder laws? How about enforcing the anti-assault laws? How about enforcing, how about actually putting criminals in jail and making them stay there? Like actually putting them away. Can't do that. Yeah, it's crap. All right. It is time for part two of our tactical response interview with Heather and Joey. I hope you enjoyed last week's uh, episode. If you didn't catch it, get over there and listen to it because it's, man, there's so much good information. I was listening to it uh, before we started doing the show just as a refresher. Uh, and it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's gold gold so there you go without further ado here comes part two he responded that he was proud of me you know yep. <laughs> um and then in it was during that conversation that he said i got a favor to ask you mm -hmm. and, and he said i'm working on this i'm trying to get it done i don't know if i'm going to get it done if i can't will you finish it and you know i said yeah of course you know, lump in my throat, all that. And I said, well, send me what you got. And he said, well, let me see how much more I can get done. And then eight days later, I got the phone call. Mm -hmm. So he knew. Uh, and I also think that as my friend, he's like, I'm, I'm going to provide Paul with a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give him 58,000 words spread out over six documents. Yeah. And I'm going to, and, and of course, you know, I had all that and he had the introduction he had the introduction section and then he had the mindset introduction, but then the other chapters didn't have intros and stuff. And I contacted Kayla and I said, did, did he tell you what he wanted to call the book? And she said, no, <laughs> I said, oh, great. So, <laughs> um, and, and, uh, so initially she said, she goes, well, how about we call it something like your responsibility to be ready for the fight. And I was like, yeah, but it's, it's too long. It's, it's mm -hmm. not a title. So we, you know, I thought about it and I was like, okay, so I, we, I said, how about four pillars of combat? How about four pillars of fighting? And we, and I think everybody, we workshopped it and everybody over on your side, you're like, oh, like four pillars of fighting. That's it. That's yeah. what it has to be. And yeah. so that it became that. That achieves the timeless goal that James had for this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, which is great. I, I, so this is the first time I've really examined the cover. I've been working my way through the book here, um, and I I just noticed that the thinker, the thinkers behind the pillars, the thinkers yeah. behind the pillars, and he has a, a, a rifle. A rifle. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that oh, was one of cool. the original fighting response T-shirts. Yeah, 
20 so, years ago, they were fighting response t-shirts with the thinker on them. That's yeah. He, that's a story that I heard for the first time the other day mm-hmm. was from one of our alumni, Brian Sayers, uh, was James. I can't remember how it got brought up, but he was asking for permission to use our logo or something like that. Or I can't remember what. Mm-hmm. And James told him to go ahead. Uh, but, uh, if he could go back in time, he would actually change the logo from the fist with the gun to the thinker. Um, so he, he yeah. always had a, had an affinity for that symbol, the, the thinker with the rifle slung over their back and stuff mm. like that, because, yeah. you know, it's, you know, who just got that tattoo day. on their body and sent me a picture of it. Who? Dorito. Oh, <laughs> really? That's awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I still have some skin exposed. I need. He to told me he was there. going to, and I'm like, dude, where are you going to put it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so You're running out of room, you're going to have to erase one. So <laughs> what did what did the thinker with the rifle? What does that symbolize? That is the the mindset behind behind carrying the or walking this martial path. I I would I would say. Um, um, he never sat down and actually talked at least to me personally about what that necessarily meant to him that's just kind of what we assumed Mm -hmm. yeah i think that's probably a fair fair assumption there yeah you know based upon what i know about james and it's it's the the well the the thinker obviously is a very famous statue right Mm -hmm. right yeah, and the, the that statue is actually oftentimes it's used to symbolize philosophy as a whole. Yeah. Right. So so right. it's like the the philosophical thinking of martial tactics mm-hmm. is kind of what I see that with the rifle. I, I like that a lot. And I actually forgot I had forgotten. I don't even know if I knew about the shirts, but once you said that, I think that I vaguely remember. Oh yeah, those are old. That that's old shirt. school. That goes back yeah. twenty years. Yeah, uh, the shirts with the 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 silhouette of the thinker with the with the rifle slung over his back. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, that that goes that goes back to the red building. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. That's whenever I was in like ninth and tenth grade. <laughs> I'm yeah. 31 now, for reference. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, well, yeah. So, so Jared is 33. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when when I started going down to Camden, it was in the aughts. Uh, I think I, well, I, I, went, I went the first time. Uh, the first time I showed up there was like 06. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was around 06 time frame. So we were just just into the, I don't know, beginning stages of the failed global war on terror. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, other things. Uh, the book. Let's talk about, a little bit more about the book. So uh, we came up with a title and we, you know, and, and it was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of repetition. There were a lot of things in there that James put in. He used, I, I never got the story about, I knew the red ink. So he used font colors. He had black mm-hmm. and red and blue. Hmm. And uh, like, I, and I was, so I look at it and a lot of the stuff I knew was just him. Like he would have an idea. And he's like, I got to make sure I talk about this in the book. So he would just put a note and he would highlight it in red, like make sure you talk about this later. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, we decided like the personal stories and, and some of the uh, the articles that he'd written or the blog posts or whatever that he had written, we, we put those in as a separate chapter uh, just so people could have those as a bonus. But yeah, James, for those of you who haven't read it yet, uh, you can go to <laughs> shopsotg.com and get mm-hmm. a pimp hand approved version right now. Uh, or you can go to tax response also in addition to um, uh, but, uh, we, he wanted his goal for those who don't know was he wanted that book to be a resource for everyone who was inspired to walk down the path. Right. Mm-hmm. And he wanted that it, he wanted it to be a, a book that would be valuable to people who had no idea who James Yeager was. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, in, you know, in 10 years and 15 years, he wanted it, people to be able to pick the book up and having never heard of him or tactical response or, uh, you know, it still gets some value from that. And I believe that we accomplished that goal. Absolutely. With, without a doubt. Um, uh, his, uh, yeah, 
he wanted it to be something that that's why he didn't talk about gear, like the specific models of this or that or anything, because he didn't want it to become obsolete uh, or uh, or anything like that. So I think that anybody who is even slightly interested in starting this this path down the martial lifestyle can pick that book up and have have lessons learned and be better for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was James that described the martial lifestyle uh, in this way, but it might've been one of the other instructors. So you guys will have to check me if I'm incorrect there at one of the classes. I really liked the way that this was described. He said that the, the martial lifestyle is a path. Like you just said, he's like, some of us are further down the path than others. He's like, but Mm -hmm. what our job is, is wherever we are on that path is to look back because there's always going to be people behind us somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's like, it doesn't matter if you've been a professional instructor or what you've done as far as teaching, like you need to look back because there's going to be people back there that need and want the information that you've got. So it's up to you, wherever you are on that martial lifestyle path, to turn around and extend that information to the people behind you on that path. And I was like, man, that is an awesome way to describe that. And now I have like zero excuses not to, for to start teaching people. So thanks. <laughs> It's like being a student for life. Yeah, that's right. Uh, no, and it's tough. It is. It's extremely difficult. And that's another conversation that James and I would have. Uh, you know, after you've written something or said something so many times, <laughs> you you feel like, look, man, I I've been saying this since 1994, and I've got, I, you know, surely I don't need to say it anymore. Surely everyone understands and gets it by now. And, 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 and he's, and you know, we would, he's like, yeah, but the truth is he goes, you know, every morning one person wakes up and decides that they want to start paying attention and mm-hmm. all that crap that you've been saying for 30 years, it's all new to them. And they've never heard it. Yep. And, and, and that's why we write stuff down. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we do videos. Um, right. So people's like, what do you think about red dots? What do you think about lasers? What do you think about? It's like, <laughs> I actually don't think watch, about that anymore because I wrote watch this the book. Video. Here, you know. <laughs> Here. Uh, you know, that's, that's why, you know, truthfully, that's why that last, last summer I wrote five books. I wrote mm-hmm. five books last summer because I wanted to, make sure that all of that information was written down. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's no question about it. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's difficult. Uh, it, it, and there's, you know, John Farnham, he said, if I ever, if he said a long time ago, I can't remember when he said it, but he's like, if I wanted to make money, I would have done something else with my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said be, you know, uh, because this isn't the way to do it. Um, mm-hmm. but, but he, that, you know, people like Farnham, they're just wired to do that. Uh, oh, right. and, and there's only, you know, now that I am where I am in life, I realize that, the, you know, there's, there's this, this, this tier, these tiers of instructors that have come down and most of the, like Farnham, right. James describes the three wise men of firearms training who were still living as Clint Smith, uh, Ken Hackthorne and John Farnham. Mm-hmm. And, all three of them started out as young disciples at gunsight. Right. Yeah. You know, Cooper doesn't get enough credit because, uh, you know, millennials are stupid and they only know what they see on TikTok every day or whatever. <laughs> but if it wouldn't have been, you know, Cooper basically, you know, he came down from Mount Sinai with the, with the four rules mm-hmm. on the tablets and he started teaching. And then he produced these disciples. And a lot of those disciples are gone now. Uh, a lot of those guys have left us. Louis Auerbuck and um, you know those guys. They've all they've left us. But uh, the the ones that are and then the thing is, you know, Clint's not going to be doing it very much longer. No, you know, he's still doing it, but he's he's been teasing retirement for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Ken is retired, right? Uh, and Ken is retired. He's like, no, I'm done. And and uh, John said he's going to die on the range. Yeah, yeah. I he said it. that. He said that's his plan. Mm-hmm. His plan is to just keep keep teaching till he sits down on the range and and keels over, uh, which is you're like, come on, man. Um, <laughs> but but seriously, you know you, you know yeah. the, and and you know Cooper basically did the same thing. He he didn't die on the range, but uh, he he kept 
teaching until he just couldn't anymore. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like he was 65 and he's like, peace out. I'm going to go fishing yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but where we are now is we're in a situation of a, you know, a first, a second, a third, going on to a fourth generation mm-hmm. of modern small arms and tactics instructors. But the the problem that we're encountering because of the world that we have, you know, it used to be if you wanted to be bona fide, you actually had to like go somewhere, mm-hmm. right? You had to get in your car truck and drive to Arizona and and you know get a, a, a job with, with Cooper. And then, then those people went out and they started, you know, they were like disciples. They went across the country and started preaching and so forth. But you had to actually phys- you had to engage in that. You had to go there. You had to do mm-hmm. that. And now we, we have people, you know, who, who took the USCCA online instructor course or whatever and now they've got a piece of paper that they got faxed to them or whatever and that says that they are a firearm instructor um and they, and and what they're engaging in is essentially just rote memorization they're like well i this is what they told me to say and so i say this thing but that's not what it means to be an instructor mm-hmm. um, just because you can do something doesn't mean you can teach people to do something mm-hmm. but Often that's that's what we you know we we discover is is people believe like well I know how to do it therefore now I know how to teach people to do it mm-hmm. uh, and that it's it's not true mm-hmm. and it's tough it's tough uh, to get it through to people's heads that you you need more you know it's like every if, if that was the case everybody who who's the um, um a class A or whatever they call it in Ipsic or whatever those guys will be firearms trainers right and a lot of them try to be but the thing is they're not actually instructors they're just they're just telling people watch what i do and do what i do right like didn't you see me didn't you see me not like i did this thing so you just do that right do do, do watch me and and do what i do yeah and uh, do it faster yeah Uh, you gotta work on your split times yeah uh james when especially whenever i started this path as an instructor um you know, he told me back then that unless they invent that thing from the matrix where he can just plug into the back of my head and teach me everything he knows, um, that I was on a, a college level of, of training pretty much college, uh, college career path kind of thing. So, uh, we, we had a bunch of people that we took classes with. We hosted a lot of people that we could train with. And, uh, I asked him, uh, there at the end, eventually I said, Hey, like, you know, you're not going to be here forever. Who's left? Like, who should I be seeking out next as soon as like, whenever I check everybody off the list. And he said, Ken Hackathorn is the only one I could not talk into coming down to Camden. So I talked to Ken at, uh, at NRA, I believe I was like, I'm going to have to find an excuse to come up there and hang out (laughs) for a little while. He's, he's the last one uh, left on the list that, that James wanted me to train with. So. Yep. And, and yeah, you just get to make a pilgrimage to the mountain because yep. he's not coming out of the mountain. No, but well, well, he'll come out for Bill Wilson. Bill yeah. Wilson's the only person left on planet Earth that can coax him out of the mountains. Mm-hmm. Um, there you go. There, there's your in. There's Invite Bill in. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're say, not hey, going to get him Ken off his you? ranch, though. That's the thing. Is 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 and he's the same way. He's like yeah. not not leaving my ranch. That's right. Yeah. I can do everything I need here. So. No, if you want, you got to come to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's really foreign to so many people uh, in our modern world. They 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 believe that they're owed. They believe that the that the that the they if it's valuable, they should come to me. Mm -hmm. And, And you know. My, my feeling is you just go fornicate yourself because that, that the height of arrogance in that. But the truth of the matter is, is go, all right, Jared, you want to go back to Socrates and, and Plato and you want to go back to the great thinkers and stuff. Uh, the, the commitment that it took to get to the thinkers mm-hmm. was part of the le- lesson. That's part of the lesson. The fact that you need to fist that you need to commit the time and effort to go to the mountain. That's part of the lesson. That's part of the lesson. James used to like, oh man, years and years ago. He said, uh, he said, my best students 
He said, the people who get the most out of my classes are the ones who eat ramen for dinner for a month so that they could save enough money to get the ammo uh, that they need to come to the class. He said, don't get me wrong. I mean, if somebody can just like, you know, write a check for the whole thing and like, no big deal. He goes, that's great. He goes, but they won't get the most out of it. He said, the people who have to suffer to take the training will get the most out of the training. Mm -hmm. And that's the same. That's that goes right along. If, if you have to journey to the mountain, you will get more from the lesson Mm -hmm. than if, if Muhammad comes to you, you know, um, it's like, you got to go to the mountain to end. Then it, it seems like, well, it's just human psychology and this isn't new. And I sure certainly didn't invent it. This is thousands of years old. Uh, and if you cannot commit to that, you know, people will say, Hey, we've got this class and this is what we're doing. And they're like, well, could you just come to my local range and do it? No mother lover. Um, <laughs> and, and you guys are like, Oh, I got to run a business, man. I got to go to their range. But you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to help you. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm, I'm like Gandalf over here. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you understand the value of the experience. You know, when I was 19 years old, I saved up my pennies and nickels and dimes and bought a plane ticket and flew to freaking Aspen, Colorado, so I could spend two weeks in the mountains and, you know, also, in addition, train with John Farnham, mm-hmm. you know, when I was 19. And... Uh, that was a, I mean, I showed up there with like $50 cash mm-hmm. to spread out over two weeks. You know, I guess my plan was to just eat McDonald's or whatever. Well, <laughs> I, well, the tuition though covered breakfast and lunch and you were on your own for dinner. Mm-hmm. So I figured, well, if nothing else, I could just eat a big lunch and then hold over until the <laughs> you know continental breakfast the next morning at the hotel. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I, I was the the guy who ate ramen for mm-hmm. you know to, so that I could pay for the plane ticket and the tuition and the everything, and uh, you know show up. I'd rent a gun. I was nineteen. I couldn't buy a handgun. I had to rent a nineteen eleven, a surplus nineteen eleven, you know from the uh, from the class, school, and it was a surplus. It was like straight GI Joe World War Two <laughs> Vietnam era. No, no fancy sights, no Packmeyer grips, no extended controls or anything like that. And, you know, by day three, we most of us had uh, we had athletic tape in the webs of our hands and on our fingers, and f- from being rubbed raw and, and so forth. Uh, I didn't die though, <laughs> and, and that's what I learned. And we were shooting lead; we were shooting cast lead bullets. This is when you say, "Is was that a thing?" Yeah. That was a thing? Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we shot cast lead bullets. And let me tell you what, if you don't understand the value of firearms maintenance, it's like those guns got dirty. Like <laughs> dirty. And I, and we and we fired about a thousand rounds over a period of four days. So Yeah. Yeah. No, I but, mean it's you touched on it, but it's true across human human psychology shows that when you're trying to start something new, if you invest into it. So like when you start strength training, right, they tell you, like, buy buy a pair of squat shoes or something like put some form of investment into this because you're going to motivate yourself to do it. And especially for the students who have to do things like we offer layaway, right, they can pay twenty five dollar increments. And so they can check that box off or like you said, eat ramen or, or cut back on other things. When you make those sacrifices to achieve a goal, no matter what that goal is, right. it definitely adds, adds more to it. You know, um, definitely more motivated once you get to whatever that goal was, you yeah. know? Oh yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Are you inspired? <laughs> Are you inspired out there? If you're not inspired by now, I don't know what I possibly could do to inspire you. But uh, yeah, we, well, uh, Zachary, are you still there? I am indeed still here. Okay. Zach's still there. The voice, the voice is still there. And uh, we're, we've, we've come up to the, uh, the one hour point. Can you believe that? It's already. Uh, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. It flew by. Yeah. It flew by. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yes. 
But uh, before we close, I'll give everyone the opportunity to say one last thing that they want to say to deliver to the audience. Jared? What? Okay. (laughs) Joey, Heather? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Thank you. First off, thank you guys for having us on here. Um, We... One of the books that James had me read was your guys's uh, instructor manual. And uh, I remember when we read it and we did our book review with James, Lewis asked him, like, are you trying to trick us? Like, is Paul Markle your pen name that you just snuck by? Uh, because you you and James were right there along each other uh, as far as this, the training and everything is concerned and what it means to be an instructor. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, very honored to be, be on here with you guys. And uh, man, it was, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, it flew by and uh, we're just going to keep on keeping on over here. Yeah. There you go. So we're still here. Some people uh, in the industry or uh, like Kayla and some of the other guys have mentioned that some people thought that we weren't going to still continue to teach after James was gone, but we're here. He kind of laid out the path for us and uh, put us, you know, and point us in the right direction. And we, we know where we're going and we're going to be doing this thing. So come out and we're still here. <laughs> One of the things that I think is interesting that people think that you're maybe going to stop once James is no longer there teaching. It's like, I don't know if they knew really knew what James was up to because he's had an instructor core that was running most of the business as far as the training portion for quite a while now. And, you know, and then he would have the special classes. It's like fighting pistol with James Yeager. Yeah. Whenever, I, I don't know if there was a schedule to that or if he did it when he wanted to, but there's uh the there's competent instructors there that have been doing this and i don't think much has probably changed since james has yeah. went to the great reward yeah um, well and something that we offer our instructors is we actually make sure that all of them continues their education and training and they uh take a minimum of four classes every year and so we do continue to gain as much knowledge and we are staying on that path of james if uh, you're a student forever Mm -hmm. Right. And so that is at the forefront always. James probably took more firearms. He's I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here. Here I am on the limb. Mm -hmm. And James Yeager, as a as a professional firearms instructor, as a person who was running a school, took more classes as a student than any other human being on planet Earth who also was doing the same thing. Yeah. Oh, and he, he strongly believed that, uh, that the worst, the last thing or the worst thing you could do was to just become comfortable, uh, and start drinking your own bathwater, smelling your own farts or whatever, uh, whatever verbiage you want to use. But, uh, yeah, James, and he said, he goes a lot, he said a lot of times he goes, I get there and, and I pay the money and I'm the student and I listen and I, I was like, mm, okay, uh, cool. He said, but at least, at very least, he goes, I know. And that was something he was very savvy about is he knew what else was going on out there mm-hmm. uh, in, in the in the firearms training world. Uh, so he was able to keep, you know, we talked about this on, I don't know which show it was, but, uh, uh, or it was, maybe it was in the book. Um, but it, if you took a class from X school uh, in 1999, and then you went back in 2011 and took that same class, and it was a car exact carbon copy, word for word, shot for shot, remake of the of the one eleven years earlier. That's not a good sign. And you're like, oh no, that's consistency, man. And you're like, no, oh, actually, that's a, a a class or a school that's not growing. Right. Um, yeah. And and when I took fighting, and I was kind of surprised because I took a fighting rifle and then I took it again like three years later and it was different and there was stuff that was missing and there was new stuff. And, and, you know, I, I asked James about, it. I was like, Hey, remember that drill that we did? He goes, yeah. He said, we were really excited about that drill. We, but we eventually got together and said, we need to move that to advanced fighting rifle because it's just <laughs> a little, it's a little too much for the first timers, uh, you know, things of that nature, uh, mm-hmm. but it was changed. And, and he said, he said, look, it, it was, if, is we don't just change stuff just to change it, you know, just so we can say we did. Uh, he said, unless there's a really good, valid reason, we don't make a change. But if there is a valid reason, we do. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that's I mean look look at where we are when John in 1986 John Farnham taught us hardcore Weaver shooting stances mm-hmm. right this is how you shoot a 1911 it's called the Weaver stance and this is where you put your feet and this is how you do it uh, we don't do that anymore yeah you know? it's not that we were idiots back then but we were just operating with the information that we had. Right. Yeah. And now we have more information and we have thousands and thousands of, of students uh, that we've used as basically lab rats <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. to conduct experiments to see how things work out. Uh, and then we improve over time. Um, so, wow. And we just we just yeah. recorded another 10 minutes after, <laughs> so we, yeah. after I said we were going to finish. All right. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to Heather and Joey from Tactical Response. Thank you to Jared. Thank you to Zachary. All right, that is it for today. Uh, unless we got any questions, do we have questions, boys? I have a lot of questions. No, from the audience, not for you. Ah, dang it. Um, I don't think so. All right. Well, if we don't have any questions, thank you very much for being a part of the Student of the Gun audience. Don't be greedy. Share this with someone else. You know that at least one other person in your life needs to hear this when you're at work. You're talking to your friends, whatever. Say, hey, did you catch Student of the Gun this week? You didn't. I'll send you the link. There you go. And if you'd like to be famous, you can always leave a review on your favorite podcatcher. Leave a review. It makes a difference. Mm. All right. Maybe maybe you can be the RIA of the week. (laughs) You know, maybe. All right, ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. And remember, you are a beginner once, a student for life.